A, B, C. Easy as one, two, three. A simple as do, re, mi. A, B, C. One, two, three, baby, you and me. I don't think the Jackson 5 have anything to worry about. Hi, everybody. Dana Sparks, broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors. <clears throat> and, excuse me. And the director of the Real Estate Academy of America. Today's quick video tip is back to basics, but an important, I think it's important, a video on exhibits and amendments, numbers and letters and staying sequential. And stay tuned for the end. And I am going to have just a brief addition, bonus information about what is an addendum. So back to basics. Basically, um, exhibits, you use letters, and amendments, you use numbers. Now, hang on, don't turn off yet. I'm going to explain why it's important to stay sequential, and what do you do if you initiate, typically, an amendment, and the parties don't agree, how do you number the next amendment? So, exhibits are lettered. Uh, a, B, C, D, E, and amendments, you use numerals, one, two, three, four, five. Now, it gets a little bit confusing here in Georgia if you are using the Georgia Association of Realtors or GAR contract package because GAR has labeled a lot of our exhibits and amendments. And we see some agents that will include those documents in a contract and not put, not assign a number or a letter <coughs> to those documents because GAR has the label. First of all, you always want to assign a letter to an exhibit and a number to an amendment, even if it has a label or a title. Why? Well, it's a good idea to get into the habit of doing that in case you are helping your clients with a contract that is not from the GAR contract package. Additionally, it indicates the, uh, the number or the precedence or the priority of the contract. So exhibit A is, was, is, was more important, not more important, um, uh, but if, if there's a conflict, then you're going to look at, if there's a conflict, if you write exhibit A, B, C, D, and there is, for whatever reason, a conflict between exhibit D and exhibit A, it could be argued that the terms of exhibit D would take precedence over the terms of exhibit A because it was lettered later in the alphabet. Now, this is more important really with amendments. So amendments are numbered one, two, three, four, five. So the question is what happens if one of the parties initiates an amendment and it never gets negotiated. So let's say the buyer initiates an amendment to address concerns, and that would be amendment number one. Uh, buyer and seller never agree to that. Buyer stays in the contract, you go on, and then there is another amendment, an amendment to, let's say, extend the closing date. Does that amendment become number two? Or do you label that number one? Well, the answer is that is amendment number one because you only use the numbers for an, uh, something that has been actually agreed upon between the buyer and the seller, landlord, tenant, whatever the contract is. So an initiated amendment whatever number that is, if it is not fully executed, you reuse that number. If you have a fully executed amendment number one, the next amendment that is fully executed would be amendment number two. Why is this important? Well, just as I said, it is important because the later number amendments take precedence over the prior numbered amendments. So if let's say we have an amendment to extend the closing date and that's amendment number one and later on something happens and we need to extend it again. You're going to also have an amendment to extend the closing date, but this would be amendment two, three, four. Well, that new information 
even though it is addressing the same topic as a previous amendment, that one takes precedence because it is later on in sequential numerical order. Additionally, um, actually back to the first point, you don't want to skip numbers because what happens is if a lender or a closing attorney gets a contract and you have amendment one, three, four, five, the lender is going to say, where's amendment two? And you say, oh, well, that was never agreed upon. Well, you then the next amendment should not be number three. So either it looks like the parties agreed upon something via amendment outside of the contract, which you can't do, or the lender may require that the parties renumber all the amendments. So it's very important to keep track of your numbers. Don't skip a number. And oh, the other reason, why are exhibits lettered and amendments numbered? Keep those separate because you can tell an exhibit is lettered. So that was negotiated between the parties at the time they were negotiating the entire purchase and sale agreement, lease, whatever document you are, you are negotiating. An amendment shows that those are agreements that were negotiated after the parties already had a binding contract. Bonus tip, what is an addendum and how does that differ? Well, the main difference between a contract addendum and an exhibit is an addendum modifies the terms of the contract, um, slightly alters the terms of a contract while the parties are negotiating the actual contract, while an exhibit provides additional information to the contract. So then you ask, hmm, well, what's the difference between a contract, between an addendum and then an amendment? Well, an addendum, again, is attached to the original contract. You're adding on to the original contract, not additional information like an exhibit, but it's a slight modification that adds new, uh, that really clarifies an existing term without changing the original contract's term. Usually an addendum is for minor changes um, whereas an amendment is a formal change to the original contract that modifies or clarifies existing terms. So it is just a slight difference, but one that I get asked all the time. I hope this back to basics contract tip helped you out. I hope my singing <laughs> uh, did not make you turn off the video right away. Uh, please comment below any questions or issues you'd like for me to address. And I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any contract tips, license law tips, uh, anything that I cover in this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Dana Sparks broker of Maximum One Greater Atlanta Realtors, satisfying your needs with service, innovation, and education. Bye. If you like that video, check out the one here. If you like the content on this entire channel, please click here to subscribe. I try to take even the most complicated of real estate situations and make them crystal clear. See what I did there? Real estate made crystal clear. Thank you guys so much for watching.